Just come forward, if you would, right. please, sir. You. You've been sworn, have you not? Yes, I have. All right, Governor. fine. Tell us your name and where you live. Last name is Gwynn, G-U-I-N-N, -N, first name Vincent, middle name Perry. I live in uh, San Diego area, California. Okay. Your occupation? I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of California in Irvine. Thank you, doctor. You taught a course in neutron activation analysis at the University of California at Irvine. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you've given testimony many times in a court of law on your analysis of the elemental composition of bullets. Yes. What is the usual purpose of trying to ascertain the elemental composition of a bullet or bullet fragment? To ascertain whether two evidence specimens were produced or were not produced in the same melt or batch of lead. Okay. Did you conduct a neutron activation analysis of the bullet and bullet fragment evidence in the Kennedy assassination at the request of the House Select Committee on Assassinations, Doctor? Yes, I did. Dr. Gwynn, were you able to determine what type of ammunition these bullet and bullet fragments were? All of these uh, were in the range of composition, a rather, rather unusual range of compositions that I had already found were characteristic of the Western Cartridge Company uh, Manli six and a half millimeter uh, Manneker Carcano cartridge uh, bullets. Do you conclude that CE842, the Connolly wrist fragments, came from CE399, the Connolly stretcher bullet? Yes, I do. And CE843, the fragments removed from President Kennedy's brain, CE840, the fragments found on the rear floor of the limousine, and CE567, the fragment found on the front seat, all came from the same bullet? Yes, I do. So there's no evidence that more than two bullets hit anyone or anything inside the presidential limousine? That's correct, and there is ev solid evidence that there were two. Doctor, you're aware that firearms experts have concluded that the Connolly stretcher bullet was fired from Oswald's Carcano rifle. Is that correct? Yes. You're also aware that firearms experts have concluded that the two large bullet fragments found on the front seat of the presidential limousine, one of which you analyzed, were also fired from Oswald's Carcano rifle. Is that correct? Yes. What you're saying is that from your neutron activation analysis, there may have been 50 people firing at President Kennedy that day. Is that correct? But if there were... They all missed. Only bullets fired from Oswald's Carcano rifle hit the president. Is that correct? That's a correct statement, yes. Thank you, Dr. Gwynn. No further questions. Mr. Spence? <clears throat> well, I'd rather cross-examine Mr. Bugliosi than the doctor, since he's the one that's given all the testimony. But the doctors on the stand. Doctor, will you answer my questions nice and simple, yes, no, like you did for Mr. Bugliosi? Wherever that's possible, yes. Here's a picture of the um, of the uh, skull, X-ray of the skull of the president. And what we see are an artist's drawing of the fragments that were seen in the X-ray. I understand that you examined only two of the thirty fragments that were found in the skull. Is that correct? There were only two that were delivered to me. Uh, I'm not Please, sure. Is that correct? That you, is correct. You, you did two? Yeah, the only two. And do you know which two? No. And so do you know what the composition is of the other 28 fragments found in his brain? Yes. Have you checked them? No, but I know what they are. Well, have you examined them? Put them through the neutron activation. They, they were not available, the other pieces. Thank you. Now, Doctor, did you analyze the large copper fragment that was found in the limousine? No, this was only an analysis of bullet, lead. I'm going to ask lead. you once more. Dr. Gwynn, did you analyze the large copper fragment that was found in the limousine? No. Are you aware of the fact, uh, Doctor, that dishonest evidence can be honestly examined? Of course. That means that an honest examination can be made of evidence that's been manufactured or planted? It's always possible, yes. Your testimony isn't to be interpreted by the jury that you find that this is honest evidence, is it? 
I cannot say, I have no reason to doubt the authenticity of the evidence. It no, came to me in the, original, the other, in the original FBI containers with their designations on them, and in all appearances the specimens match what was in the Warren Commission report description You're, of them. Yes, so I have no reason to doubt that they are completely authentic. They were brought to me from the National Archives by a man of the National Archives. I'm understanding that, yes. sir, but you're not testifying to this jury that you can vouch for their authenticity, are you? No, you, n you never can do that in any criminal case. Your testimony isn't to be interpreted to mean that you know that the bullet parts that you examined actually came from the body of the president. No way, unless I were the surgeon. And you just examined what they gave you, isn't that true, doctor? Correct. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, you're excused. Thank you very much. You may step down. Call your next witness.